It's a victory Monday, but we're out of the gates with some bad news for the birds. Jalen Hurts suffered a sprained shoulder in yesterday's win over the Bears, and according to Adam Schefter, he may not play on Saturday against the Cowboys. The injury reportedly happened in the third quarter. On that note, welcome into Birds Huddle, powered by PointsBet. I'm Tara Hatcher. He's Barrett Brooks. Normally, we're in a, a better mood on a Monday like this, but this isn't uh, clearly the news that we want. I'm about. still in a good mood. Sprain, okay. sprain just means it's just a little bit sore. That's all. Just, just a little bit sore. It's a little bit sore and yeah. it can be medically evaluated right. as being sore. We'll take it for what it is. Uh, John Clark has much more on this breaking news. It's the Bird's Eye View presented by Ocean Casino and Resort in Atlantic City. I think the word that comes to mind here is relief. Jalen Hurts has a sprained shoulder. It is his right throwing shoulder, but x-rays say there is no broken bones anywhere. X-rays were negative, so the MRI found the sprained shoulder, and I'm told it's not considered serious. If the playoffs were starting, Jalen Hurts would be playing. I'm told he basically needs some rest and rehab, so his status for this weekend in Dallas, it is in doubt. But as I said, it is not considered a long-term injury. He will be ready for the playoffs. And it's amazing to think about some of the throws he made in the fourth quarter, especially to A.J. Brown, and he played through the sprained shoulder. One bird told me he is a tough MF. And I got to tell you, relief is the key word, because five years ago, a week ago, Carson Wentz went down with a torn ACL and his season was over. Jalen Hurts' season is not over. So we can all wipe the sweat off our brow. That brings <laughs> us to Barrett's three-point stance presented by your Mercedes. First stance, Jalen Hurts' injury. It is a temporary blow. We heard uh, John Clark uh, censor himself, but we do know, in fact, Jalen, he's a tough guy. He can handle a lot, and it's a, it's a huge relief to know that this is a minor, and the Eagles have given themselves the breathing room to allow him to recover. Barrett. Well, it's a good thing that the Eagles are deep enough that they can do it. Now, I mean, as I said just a little bit earlier, if he had to play, I'm sure he can play. And when you say sprained shoulder, I think he's, you could more so say it's more of a a sore shoulder, you know? I mean, look at what he did. You know, look at those numbers. Now, this is a tough, tough cracker right here. He can play hard, and he'll, he'll go through and make things happen. I'm not necessarily thinking that, you know, we're going to give up against Dallas. We're going to do great against Dallas. But, I mean, it, it doesn't change how they're going to call plays for, um, for Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is, is, is a guy, that, he plays a physical brand of football. Will that hurt him as he goes forward? No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't change the way they call plays for him. I know 17 run plays is a lot for a quarterback, but he's built differently than most quarterbacks. Every player out there goes out there with the notion that he could possibly be hurt. Everybody, I mean, this is, this is not a sport. This is a gladiator sport. This is not a sport you can go out there and, you know, it's just tiptoeing through the, the, the tulips. This is a gladiator sport. You're going to go out there. You're going to get hurt sometimes. You're going to be sore. That's just what happens. But you cannot stop running the offense the way you run it. I mean, for three quarters, you know, he was running 17 times. A lot of time for a lot of times that a quarterback has in running the rock, especially when you have a very good running back behind him. But it's a re he's the reason why this offense plays so well. This offense plays well because he's a threat back there in the backfield. You have to check him first before you go to any of the other options. And that's why. Um, you know, you have to play the offense that you're playing for Jalen Hurts. He's just too much of a weapon to just pigeonhole him into being a guy that throws all the time or pigeonhole him into a guy that we're going to lessen the blow on him and not run him as much. You got to do it. He's that gifted of a guy. You have to use him as a weapon. No tiptoeing through the tulips. No, I love no. that. All right, uh, moving right along to number two. Get ready for Minshew Mania on Christmas Eve. It's about but you to happen. think he's... He's capable. He is uh, able to do this against Dallas. Right, I'm going to tell you, look, 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 excuse me. They can make this happen. It will happen. In fact, I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. Mitchu Mania is back, baby. It's here. Mitchu Mania is here. We're about to make it happen. He's going to win this game for Dallas. Rest assured, Mitchu can play. They're going to change up. They're going to change everything up a little bit. They're going to change up how they run this offense. They know that this guy's a very capable starting quarterback. Not a backup quarterback, but a starting quarterback. Quarterback. That's why you're paying them the way you're paying them. Gardner Mitchell will come out and reassure everybody and beat this Dallas team. They will. I mean, it'll be granted. It will be different from what we saw 
you know, Jalen Hurst doing it. It won't be any of the RPOs or zone reads. They may throw a couple of them. He's more of a drop back quarterback, but he's a smart guy. He understands where the ball is supposed to go. Hey, and look at this. Maybe we just hand the ball off a little bit. Maybe we get a guy like Miles Sanders involved in the game earlier and just hand the ball off. That's all we need to do. We have good enough run blockers to go out there and open up holes for this guy. We have plenty of great uh, receivers that Garner Mitchell can throw to. We have a great offensive line that can play just as good as anybody in the league. In fact, they are the best offensive line in the league. Give this guy a shot. This team believes in Garner Mitchell. He will be fine out there. He will play the game the way he's supposed to be playing. He's a, he's a, you remember when he played against the Jets. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be out there playing. I have no doubt, none whatsoever, the guard I mentioned won't go out there and win this game against Dallas. He has a strong arm. He understands the offense. The team trusts him. He'll go out there and hose it a little bit. It might be a huge day passing, yeah. but it also be a huge day with him just handing the well, ball. Well, we had an interesting conversation upstairs with our producer, Mike Mulhern, as well as Danny Pamels, I believe, where it was like, you want you want Garner to go out there and play great. You want him to go out there and help the Eagles yes. win this game. But also, after that whole annoying conversation instigated by Micah Parsons about, it's the team's really good, it's the system, it's this, it's that. Nowhere, I just want Gardner Minshew to go out there and light it up because you don't want it to be the the team is good in so many positions right, right, we have right. talked about that at length but it's kind of one of those things where you go man if Garner goes out there and he really beats up on Dallas does that even give one iota of credibility to Michael Parsons I think if Gardner plays phenomenal it does not so you kind of hope that that's the situation well right? I know we're gonna go out there we're gonna beat Dallas my early Christmas gift I can't wait this Saturday is gonna be in front of everybody that I'm not caring about any of these other, you know, or that Dallas is ahead of us. I mean, can you believe it? The odds makers are still making Dallas the front runners now. They have better odds than we do? Come on. They now. did before Jalen got hurt. We're going to talk about that later in storylines, but it's so annoying. All right, anyways, let's move right along to number three. The NFC is going to go through Philly. They need one more win to secure home field advantage. And this, I mean, we've talked about this is a short term bump in the road for the Eagles and it still remains that they are the domination nation the NFC is going to go through. Yeah, if you look at everybody else has three losses at the very least. We only have one loss. We're going to go in, we're going to beat up on this Dallas team, win this Dallas team, and then we're going to go in the next week and guarantee that this Saints team is going to have a bad draft pick because we're going to beat them also. The next game after the Giants, we don't care much about the Giants. In fact, they'll probably rest everybody by then. But I can almost guarantee that we'll beat Dallas and we'll beat the Saints and go into this playoff system ready to rock and roll. These guys will be okay. I'm loving the fact that we have, will have a bye and we will go through, everything's going to go through Philadelphia at the end of the you day. You know what's so annoying? You look at that graphic and you look at like the NFC South and you don't even have to be 500 to win that division. Well, you have to be like the best team in the NFC to win right, the NFC right. East right now. I mean, I need <laughs> Tampa Bay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a um, Brady fan right now. Come on now, man. Guys, win more games so you can get into the playoffs so we can have a better draft pick with the Saints. Well, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm wishing right now. To quote Bear Brooks, ah, da, da.